in Raleigh, North Carolina, Naughty by Nature, who even has a natural hair conference coming up, they do a lot of um, festivals and things within the community. If they call on me to be a host or a spoken word artist, they contractually pays me well. Now, out of all the thousands of times that you've seen me, I can't really think of a a, a lot of other people. Well, and I I pretty much been in every church in the in the community. I've been everywhere, so it's it's a it's a it's a tough thing, but you got to love it to even do it anyway. And most right. artists um gonna work within your budgets and all of that good stuff. I take my fifty dollar payments and my twenty five dollar payments and things of that nature. And when we speak like this or when when the sister Monica speaks like that, it's really just a, a, a venting because we know that some people can really pay you, and they take advantage right. of the humility of the artist. That's what you don't like. Right. Sometimes you don't mind not getting paid, but when you are not getting paid just because people are willing to take advantage of the humility of the artist, that's when it hurts, and that happens more often than fair treatment happens. And I will, you know, and I can attest to that through my own experiences. And so for myself, that's why I write plays with my spoken word, and I try to be creative in the way that I present my spoken word. And I'm going to charge you a ticket to come see it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's when I feed myself off my gift, and I think that's why we were given our gifts to think of creative ways to feed ourselves instead of depending on getting paid by other people every time we do something. Because the same event that you're going to, you can create that event yourself. Right. That's very true. But sometimes I wonder if you, and I'm just wondering what you think about this, you think that sometimes our arts administrators, even though they're supposed to be arts administrators, that means that they're supposed to be encouraging the art and also helping the artists, they get so caught up in being administrators that they don't actually do enough jobs of actually working on supporting the artist. Right, because, and, and that goes, that's, that's across the board. Our administrators, you know, we can't, we can't um, knock them because not all of them. I mean, you're at the Hay Tide. The Hay Tide has always been good to me, and it's some venues that should be more accommodating to artists, especially local artists. I mean, we're right here in the community. We need places to try out our work. We need places to present our work. But our administrators, they're the, they're the gatekeepers of certain things that artists can get that will help their careers, whether it be use of facilities or, or grant money or equipment use, props, right. anything. Like we should be able to go to places in the community that's set up for art and ran by art administrators. And pretty much if you are an artist with a great reputation, you can build your own audience, and you bring a lot to the table. The art administrators within the art community and within these art facilities should be willing to at least work with you then. I mean, you're doing a lot of groundwork. You're doing a lot of building a name for yourself, and you're doing all these things, and you just want places and, and money and resources. And our administrators are very particular with who they distribute things to and amongst and we know that there are that that in this art community there are cliques and within these cliques you know people don't really work with each other outside their cliques so you have to be in certain cliques to get any type of progress and that's why i roll solo and they know it so um i i've I really been I've been in this art community for twenty years and I hold it down and everybody know it. And from the poets to the art administrators and to artists in the community or whoever. My phone don't ring. Ain't nobody trying to work with me. Don't nobody call me and talk to me about doing anything or find or finding funds for the things that I'm doing that they know are major and life changing. Me and my daughter dances when I do that poem on stage, and she's a great dancer from ballet to point. And she might even try out for the Harlem Dance Theater this summer coming. That's how good she is. But every time people see us do the poem and dance, they're not trying to help take it to the next level. And, and I feel like after 20 years of doing art in this community, I'm Broadway ready with some of my shows. You think the community oh, yeah. backing me? No. Well, 
Yeah, because you, you're not the first person that I've heard this from. I've even heard it from, like, Calvin Anderson and Herman Jones and even, to some degree, Renee, where they're thinking that they're definitely feeling that their stuff is definitely ready to be taken to the next level, not just on the theaters of Durham or Raleigh or even Winston-Salem, but possibly, like you said, to New York or California or other places, even some of them feeling that their works are feeling and I it. And I give, and I give – I give the song as as far as poets because that's who I hang out with with the most. I give the song a lot of credit for the things that he make happen, but a lot of people don't know how hard the grind was and how hard he had to work to get himself get himself in a position to do some of the things that he do. So you respect the people that can actually get to places where they can get things done amongst these art administrators, but it's hard work. It's real hard oh, yeah. work. I believe it. Now, who are some of the other people? You mentioned Monica. You mentioned Desan. Who are some of the other people that are currently doing artwork out there that you also admire as some of your peers, whether they're here or whether they're even in other places? They can be in New York or D.C. if there's places of poets that you admire that are in other cities and other places. Oh, man. I admire all the poets around here because, uh, especially the the ones of my generation, the Dasana High News, the Langston Fuses, Sadiq, Queen Sharon, um, you know everybody. And then there was a there was a rebirth of a younger generations of poets with G and Kane and Will and that crew. So I, I I love and respect all the artists around here because I know the courage and the heart that it takes to even get in front of people in this area. So everybody around here, you know, and um, just some of my personal favorites, 13 of Nazareth out of Washington, D.C., Sonny Patterson out of um, Louisiana, Abyss, Gra- Abyss Graham out of Atlanta, Moses West out of Jacksonville, Florida. Um, those are some of my favorites, man. And I just love all young um, and I say anybody under 100 is young. So I love all young black artists, especially first and foremost, all the African-American artists doing it from Durham, North Carolina to Hollywood. I love them all. I don't, I, don't, I don't judge any of them. And I wish some of them would do different things with their gifts, but I love them all for the work that it takes to get there. And my personal favorites are pretty much the people that I get to hang out with and cross my paths. Obio Dune of the Last Poets, I've 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 kicked it with him on several occasions. So he's one of my favorite elders that's out here still being an artist. Helena Lewis, um, she held down the New Yorkian Cafe in New York, um, offered me a feature. So it's people that that you learn um, over time after 20 years. You don't met a lot of people. I you know Sam Art Williams, the creator of the Martin Show, is one of my theater festival buddies. And and just being at, at the theater festival and and just being in the arts scene, you meet so many people that influence you and inspire you. You don't want to get into too much name calling because you don't want to yeah. leave anybody out. But if you're out here doing it, I pretty much love you. You know what I'm saying? I pretty much love what you're doing. I love your work. I love to see it. Um, the visual artist, man, Artie, Artie Barks, Barksdale is like the greatest artist I, I've ever known. Langston Fuse is a great visual artist. Marla Hawkins is a great visual artist. I mean, you know, so I just know people, and when you go pe- go places, you try to support them. If you, if you go yeah. and, and look in, in my in, in my house, my bookshelves, every artist I've ever met, n- novelists, poets, I bought their work. Every their CDs, and I got every poet CD, and they probably don't even know I got it. Every book that they've written and put out, I pretty much got them all. Um, the, the people that I can't support to the greatest level that I really want to are the visual artists because I know the level of creation that it takes to visually art, you know, in the visual art and the paintings. And I want to really pay artists um, what they're worth if I buy a painting. Those are the hardest things for me to support, but I'm still trying to grow to a place where I can pretty much buy artwork. Um, that I really, really love at the price that it's worth instead of, um, you know, I got some personal artist friends that might do some artwork for me, but, you know, I don't take advantage of those moments 
And I really just want to support visual artists more, but I love and support everybody. Well, yeah, you definitely do that. You do that on a regular basis. I can definitely say that I have seen that from, with my own eyes, how much you support the artist. Um, you talked about it earlier, and I know it's coming up not this year but next year, but what has been the importance of the National Black Theater Festival for you ever since you've been going there? And you've gone both as competing on the – well, not competing, but performing as the open mic that they do at midnight with Midnight Poetry, but you've also done some acting there as well. So what has that meant to you as a place to – um, hone your gifts into the network with people. Oh man, it's like the it's like one of the greatest um, events for African American artists to network and meet. And when they made spoken word a part of it, it it just made it even better for me. And what people don't know, I was acting in plays um, before I ever said a poem. So there's a a big part of my heart that loves the theater. But there's a greater fear in auditioning for plays than it is in going to the stage and saying a poem. So I say more poems than I actually try to get in plays and movies. But when you're at the National Black Theater Festival, it's that one place where poets, actors, and, and artists that sing, and all these artists, are they're all in one place, and everybody is own love so anybody you meet no matter who you thought they were because you might have only seen them on television in your lifetime you could be standing right next to them and had the greatest conversation of your life and those moments be life-changing as an artist because it gives you that confidence and knowing that most of these superstars and most of these people only became superstars because of the work that they put in and they really just regular people and that's what um, you really, really find out in that environment is that you are just like them and they are just like you, and that helps you be confident in what you're doing all by itself. And if you had the right conversation at the right time with the right person, it can be career-changing. Oh, yeah. And Definitely. when you perform as a, spoken word artist, as a spoken word artist, the Midnight Poetry Jam is one of the staples of the festival and one of the biggest parts of the festival so you're gonna you you might have a chance to perform in front of five hundred to a thousand people at one event, and that's rare for poets when you're used to going to open mics. But now all you got to do is sign the list, and you're in front of a thousand people, and one of your favorite actors might have po- um, performed a poem right before you, and then it's your turn. Right. So that's the that's that's what that's what it gives you. It just gives you that love of knowing that. You know, when 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 our people come together, it's just it's just love sometimes, oh, yeah. and that's one of those places where it's just all love, and anything can happen in the in in your artistic career while you're there. Yeah, no doubt about that. Now we've heard some people talk about this new renaissance that's taking place in Durham. Now you talked about when you first came here, it was already starting to bubble with something going on. But do you think that we're in the middle of a new artistic renaissance? Because I know I've heard even some people comparing to what's going on here, what's going on in Atlanta, what's going on in other parts of the country as being part of a newer kind of Harlem Renaissance kind of vibe. Do you feel that that's what's taking place, or do you think that we're still a step or two away from that? I think we're there. And I think it's just a matter of artists. Um, Artists that's been around like myself, it's a great time. For, for myself to be in front of people that have never seen or heard a poem I've ever said before in their life. And that's the, that's, that's what I really, really recognize about it. Like you could take a place, um, like we, we'll just say the BU cafe. It's been mm-hmm. around long enough for me to have been in there and performed for weeks at the time, months at the time, year a year then the next year and the next year and you're pretty much going to run into the same group of people different people that love the arts and all of that you're going to be you cafe on a on any given night now it might be an audience full of people you've never seen before in your life and that's hard for somebody that's been doing spoken word in an area the same area as your home base for 20 years. 
So if I've been doing spoken word in the same place for 20 years, and now when I go downtown, Durham,